Sub so guys, I want you to take a look at this book right here, The Lost Throne. Very basic art, very minimalistic, mostly white, few splotches of color with skulls, but that's pretty much it in the way of the art department. Now have a look at this book. If they were side by side in a library, my eyes would completely skim over this. I wouldn't even look at this. I'd go straight for this book. But one day, for some reason, I chose to pick up this book. I chose to go through it, have a glance at it. I borrowed it and what I found was that this was the one of the best books I've ever read. Problems, coding problems, technical problems, they're pretty similar to the example I've just described right now. These problems, they're not clear cut, they're not straightforward. You can't just see it, read it at face value and come up with the answer. You're going to have to think about it a little. You're going to have to mull over it again, mull over it, think about it and then arrive at the optimal solution. Every problem is going to follow the age-old adage, don't judge a book by its cover. Just remember that. So, without any further ado, this is my first problem-solving video. Hope you guys get, like it. Let's get into it. Sup guys? Welcome to the first problem in our series titled Intersection of three sorted arrays. This problem has been asked in a bunch of different places, most notably Facebook. It's a small problem, it's a simple problem, but it's a very significant one. Let's get into it, shall we? Intersection of three sorted arrays. You are given three sorted arrays, ARR1, ARR2, and ARR3. Your task is to return a sorted array of elements that are common to all three arrays. Here we can see our input is n1, n2, n3, the lengths of each of the arrays, and the input is also the arrays themselves, which we can see right here. Phi, phi, and phi are the lengths of array 1, array 2, and array 3. Output is going to be a sorted array of numbers common to array 1, 2, and 3. I've taken the liberty of illustrating it right here. What we can see here is the number 1 is common to all three arrays. Right off the bat, we can see that which is why one goes into a result set. Two is there only in array one and array two. Similarly, three is there only in array one and array three, but five is there in all three arrays, which is why five goes into a result. And any other number like seven or eight or nine is there in only one of the arrays, which is why we don't consider it. Let's go back to the question and have a look at the constraints. One less than or equal to the lengths of the arrays, less than or equal to a thousand, and one less than or equal to each of the elements of the array is less than or equal to 2000. So these are pretty self-explanatory. The lengths of the arrays range between 1 and 1000. And each element in the array can have a maximum value of 2000 and a minimum of 1. And an important point here is there will be at least one element common to all three arrays. In other words, our result set right here, it will never be an empty set. It will always have at least one number in it. So guys. Have a gander, take a look at the question. I want you guys to write it down somewhere. Just think about it for a while. Pause the video here. Come, try coming up with any solution you can. That's always making a step forward. Following that, I'll explain the solution to you guys. So we'll be back in a bit. See you guys later. Welcome back. Do you guys think you've reached the optimal solution? Do you guys think you're mostly, most of the way there, you guys just need a little shove to get to the final solution? If you do, leave your comments down below. I want to know how far you guys got and if you got there without my help. Now, here's the solution. We're going to have three variables, x, y, and z, each pointing to the beginnings of ARR1, 2, and 3, respectively. x, y, and z are going to have two important attributes associated with them. One is going to be their location, and the second is going to be their value. So their location is the location in the respective array, which is zero in this case, as arrays are zero indexed, and each of their values is one. Since x is equal to y equals to z, we're going to take that value one, put it into our result set, and push x, y, and z up by one. Now, the location of z is going to be one, but its value is going to be three. And for x and y, their locations are one, but their values are two. And what we'll notice here is that they're not equal. All three are not equal. And we're going to treat the previous elements, that is the previous ones, like they don't exist anymore because we're done with them. To quote Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, they're dead to us. 
So the previous ones, we're going to pretend they don't exist. So right now, the smallest element in ARR3 is 3. There can't be a 2 in ARR3 if the smallest element is 3, which is why we push our minimum elements, that is x and y, up by 1. So x is now 3, y is now 5, z is now 3. 3, 5, 3, we're going to follow the same concept. If 5 is the minimum element, there can't be a 3 in our A2. So we're going to move x and z up by 1. 4, 5, 4, exact same concept, x and z go up by 1. And now they're all 5, 5 and 5, which is why we take that 5. And we put it into our result set. And now if we try moving forward by 1, we'll see that x has reached the end of its array. Whenever any one of these variables reaches the end of its respective array, we're going to terminate the iterations. Which is why it's better to use a while loop in this case as opposed to a for loop. As for loops normally run for a set number of iterations. For i is 1, i less than n, i plus plus. While loops can run as long as a condition is being met. In this case, while x is not reached the end of ARR1, while y has not reached the end of ARR2, and while z has not reached the end of ARR3, keep executing. So that's been the logic behind the problem, guys. Now let's get into the coding bit of it. This is the meat of the code. We're going to assume our inputs come into the function as parameters, and this is the snippet that's the most important. Initially, x location, y location, and z location, all zero, as they're pointing to the first elements, respectively. Result set is naturally empty initially since there's nothing in our result. Now, while x location hasn't reached the end of the first array, y location the end of the second array, and z location hasn't reached the end of the third array, keep on executing. The moment this condition has been broken, that is one reaches the end of the array, we're gonna break from the loop and return our result. Let's assign the values at those locations to x, y, and z, initializing x, y, and z essentially. And here, this is the very important bit. The first condition we're going to check is if all three are equal. That is to say, x, y, and z are all equal. Then we're going to append that value to our result. We're going to put that value into our result. And we're going to increase each of those pointers up by 1. So x location up by 1, y location up by 1, and z location up by 1. If that is not the case, then we have to identify the minimum element and move that up by 1. If x is the minimum element, x location up by 1. If y is the minimum element, y location up by 1. And you guessed it. If z location is the minimum element, z location moves up by 1. Now we've returned our result. Let's see if this works. Once we compile it, our sample test cases have been passed. This is the real test after submitting. Perfect. We've done it in a good time. Guys, that's been the solution to the problem. Intersection of three sorted arrays. I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked my explanation. If you did, like, subscribe, and bell, the golden trio. Just make sure to click all three. And leave your thoughts down below if there's anything you like or if there's anything you dislike. Just leave your thoughts down below so we know how to improve. We can tailor our channel to meet your needs. It's been Vivek Kolur, guys. Great solving it for you. Our next problem is going to be even more interesting. I'll see you guys there.